Hello YouTube, and welcome all of my new subscribers. Um, so, the question in this video is going to be one that Cheeky Vitmo 8 I think it is, uh, raised in one of his recent videos, and that's why why didn't an atheist philosopher write the God Delusion? Right? Why, um, in some sense, he sees it as as a discredit to um, philosophers who are atheists that they didn't write something. Um, which, which could sort of crystallize a movement in the way that the God Delusion did, um, and and I think I sort of half agree, right? Um, I think that, um, but I think it's an interesting question, right? Why why did a philosopher not write write the God Delusion or some similar book? There are really two reasons. Um, you mentioned sort of the ivory tower of philosophy. I think I, I would agree with that. I think I'd sort of unpack that a little bit differently, but but I think I sort of agree with it. But nonetheless, I think there are two other reasons why why that that doesn't happen. Um, first of all, uh, an atheist philosopher is is a philosopher, right? Um, and I'm speaking here. Uh, I just want to say. I'm speaking here mainly of the continental tradition rather than the analytic tradition of philosophy. There's this split that happens in the 20th century, um, and I'm most familiar with the continental side, um, and so I can really only answer from that perspective. Um, so, what a, a, a philosopher is a philosopher, first and foremost, right? He's, he's not an atheist first and foremost. Um, and the philosopher is not a scientist either. Um, it's, philosophy is not about uh, weighing the, the veracity or, or the truth of, of propositions in, in some empirical way. Um, I, could, I could get into that and get into the question of what philosophy is about, but um, it's, it's, just, it's just not about that project. Um, an atheist philosopher is a philosopher first and foremost, which means that they spend um, years and years, most of their lives, um, understanding their own tradition and understanding the tradition of philosophy. And uh, tied to that tradition inextricably is like at least 1,500 years, if not more, of purely Christian thought. Um, so you can't be a philosopher without being really steeped in Christian thought, regardless of what your beliefs on the existence of God are. And as a result, when an, when a philosopher thinks about Christianity, um, they're not thinking about newer forms of Christianity, like Christian fundamentalism. Um, they're, they're not thinking about American Protestantism, they're not thinking about people like I don't know, the Westboro Baptist Church or Saiten Bruggenkate or something like that. Um, what they're thinking about is are people more like uh, Augustine of Hippo, um, Saint Anselm, um, uh, various mystics. Um, they're thinking about people like Pascal and Kierkegaard, and and they're thinking about you know the most intellectual side of of Christianity. Um, and what you find in, in works like that is that really the existence of God is, is something that's not, not terribly important to philosophers like that. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not at the heart of, of their thinking about Christianity. It's just sort of taken as a given that God exists. So when, when a philosopher thinks about uh, Augustine, He's, he's going to be thinking about Augustine writing about a subject like mourning, right? Um, he's going to be thinking, of when, he, when a philosopher talks about Pascal, he's, he's going to be talking about Pascal's writing on, on faith as an idea, maybe with an eye towards whether or not you can apply that idea in a secular way, um, maybe with an eye towards... towards um, what that might mean for Pascal, what that might mean for us today, right? 
So, in some way, the, the apologetic question of whether or not God exists is really just just not of interest to the atheist, to the atheist philosopher, because for them the answer is already no, right? Um, but nonetheless, that doesn't mean you can't get something out of out of these this sort of rich history and and tradition of, that talks about very human concerns, talks about death, talks about mourning, talks about joy and and love, and these questions that are very central to to being a human. Um, and and all that stuff is is valuable regardless of whether or not God exists. Um, so there's there's a there's a much a philosopher has a much richer conception of of uh, what Christianity is than um, than you know Christianity is contemporary evangelical Protestantism, right? There's just no interest in contemporary in, in that in that form. And if it is, it's a very scholarly interest. It's not really like a polemical interest, right? Um, I don't I don't think I think philosophers engage in critique. That's half of what philosophy is, um, at least half of what philosophy is. But it, it's it's um, it's not the same thing as as being polemical. Um, so I think right off the bat, through that lens, like it's clear that you know a philosopher couldn't write something like the God delusion. It wouldn't it wouldn't make sense. Um, and also one step further is that. You know, philosophers aren't aren't scientists. Um, the project of philosophy is not to establish uh, the truth of existence claims. At least on the continental side, like that's it's just not what they do. So the truth or untruth of God's existence, <coughs> um, it it becomes sort of a second class question at, at best. Right? Simon Critchley puts it really well. He says, "I've always been very at home, even though I'm an atheist." Uh, I've always been very at home in, in Christian philosophy. I'm, I've always been very at home in a thinker like like Pascal or Augustine or, or Kierkegaard. Um, and he says, even if I can't accept their answers, um, uh, they have a tendency to, to, to raise exactly the right questions. Um, so that's, that's a very different view of, of, of religion. Um, they don't. I don't think that they consider consider it an, an enemy so much as something that is a part of their tradition that contains things that they wouldn't affirm, contains things that they do affirm. Um, uh, it's it's just much more complex than than this is something that needs to be fought against or something. Um, the other thing too is that um, is the question of whether or not religion has value in society. Um, and when you begin to unpack that question, um, you, I think on, on YouTube, you get this sense that, that that question comes down to who's killed more people, um, or, you know, who's, I don't know, the Pope says this about contraception, and and AIDS, and, and you know, you, you get these, these kinds of questions, which are, of course, really important questions to deal with. Um, but the philosopher is trained to, to look in, in a more subtle way. And they would think of the question of the value of religion as being something like, um, like, being more of a historical question, right? What, what has religion contributed? Um, specifically, what has Christianity contributed? Um, which is an interesting question. I mean, the, uh, to cite Critchley again, he maintains, and I think this is, this might be true, that um, it's not so much that it is Christian, but but it makes sense for the idea of the separation of church and state to appear in a Christian culture. Um, and he cites Bible verses like uh, uh, 
render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, render unto the Lord that which is the Lord's, right? My kingdom is not of this world. So in the New Testament, you get sort of the first articulation of the idea that religion and politics are two separate discourses. Um, and it, so it, it makes sense that the separation of church and state would, would appear in the West, which is so deeply ensconced in, in Christian discourse. Um, so that's something that you could say, uh, if not directly emerge from Christianity, is 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 something that that Christianity was it, it was a potential that Christianity was pregnant with. I'll put it that way. Um, now, I think the the atheist philosopher find you know this sort of which is a, an obviously reductive category. But I think the atheist philosopher um, is skeptical that that um, Christianity has exhausted itself, right? It's skeptical of the idea that Christianity as a form has has run out of potential in a certain way. Um, and so from from that lens, the task is not so much to to disprove it, or to to deconvert people, or something like that, but the task is to uh, uncover the the contemporary potentials of what what religion might might have to say, right? Um, to uncover that in Christianity which might be applicable to our to our contemporary situation. I don't think there. You know, I think it might be naive. I think the philosopher might consider it to be naive that um, uh, um, the goal of doing away with religion um, it, that might be that might be too 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 much, too far, or or too naive. Um, the on the other hand, what the goal I think for the philosopher should or is 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 to to unpack religion in in ways that aren't as um, offensive, I guess you could say, um, to provide different readings of religion that that don't lead to something like the Westboro Baptist Church, or don't lead to something like uh, persecution of homosexuals or or all of this kind of stuff, right? So you can you can disagree with that picture of of um, of the task, I guess you could say. Um, and you might even be right to disagree with it. Um, but the point is, is that you, of course, you know, from those two standpoints, from those two legs, you know, of course an atheist philosopher is not going to write a book like The God Delusion. Um, it, it wouldn't even make sense, like the attempt wouldn't even make sense. Um, it, a book like that takes somebody, it, it takes a scientist to write, it takes somebody who looks at the existence of God as the central question of religion, um, and wants to frame that as a hypothesis, um, which are two moves that you know, the philosopher just just wouldn't even... You know, this is where you get most of the philosophical critique of Dawkins from atheist philosophers, is, is, is just those two moves don't even make sense. Um, now, here's where my sympathy for Dawkins comes in, however, is that I think within the tradition of Christianity, conceived of as a 2,000-year tradition, um, it doesn't make sense. But I think, you know, in America, in this time and place, um, there are people, there are lots and lots of Christians who feel that um, the veracity of their religion depends on those two moves. And so as a result, like, what the God delusion is good for is to challenge that version of Christianity, that sort of popular American evangelical Protestant iteration of Christianity. Um, 
that's what the God Delusion is, is good for, and I think it's very, very, very good at doing that. It's also very, very good at being a popular book around which a movement can crystallize, right? Um, but, of course, it's not a book that, that an atheist philosopher of religion would write. Um, and I would recommend for um, a, a text that's accessible, I guess you could say, um, by an atheist philosopher of religion. I'd recommend The Faith of the Faithless by Simon Critchley, and I'd also recommend uh, God in Pain, which is a book by Slavoj Žižek, and uh, it's a joint production by Slavoj Žižek and a, um, a Lutheran uh, uh, clergyman. I don't know what his, what his status is. It's a really interesting text, though. Um, but you can see that the emphasis is on a, a totally different different register. And like the point, or if you take those two texts, you can see that, the, I guess you could say the mission or the goal of, of thinking through religion is something totally different than, than a Dawkins or a Hitchens. Um, and I, sort of caught in the middle, um, just feel that there's, there's a place for, for both. Um, I think that too hastily has the YouTube atheist community sort of cast off um, philosophy as such. Um, not everybody, but I think I think you see perhaps a little bit too much of it. So that's a perhaps very long and perhaps very rambly video. Um, but I just kind of wanted to to unpack that question because I think it's an interesting point that you raise. And have a good day.